Hi everyone, this is Kathy Gross, Kirkwood Bookkeeping Clean and Simple, and today I'm going to talk about not only how to enter the handwritten checks in QuickBooks online, but I also want to highlight a best practice that I teach all of my clients. So before we actually get started, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do so, share it with others, or at very minimum, go ahead and click on the notification bell so that way you'll receive notifications for any new videos that I put out. I usually put out a new video once per week on QuickBooks related topics and even though I gear my instruction or my videos to accounted users mostly, if you have derived any kind of benefit from any of the content that I have, you're welcome to join us whether or not you're an accounted user. So anyway, with that said, I just want to let you know that we are in the Kathy's bookkeeping test file and we are in the bank transaction center. And so I'm going to scroll down here. And what I like to do is when I'm working with checks and, you know, we're going to have clients that are going to use handwritten checks no matter what we try to do. So we need to learn how to deal with those and teach them the proper workflows to use. So first of all, we want to make sure that the on the baby gear column here, or the baby gear cog, we want to make sure that check numbers are turned on. So that way that column shows up. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the column you're hitting. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring up all of our check numbers. So that way we can see them here. So ordinarily what we would want to do before these come through the banking center. We want to make sure we enter these in manually or have them enter these in manually. So that way, when they're going through encoding these and they have the idea of what, what they are for. So that way we're not having to hound them down to ask them. Now, depending on who you bank with, you might have an attachment that comes through from your bank, but it doesn't always work. So this is the preferred workflow that you would want to use. So and I have an example here of one that I'm going to use. It's this one right here, this 6050 for $2,294.22. And we're going to say that that is actually a end of year tax payment or something like that. So what, what you would ordinarily do is instruct your people here to go here and you would end every time they write a manual check a handwritten check, you're going to instruct them to go ahead and enter a check. So they would go to the plus new and then go to checks. And then they would enter the check. And let's see if we have a tax entity. We let, Let's say this was Georgia Department of Revenue or something like that. Just for the sake of what we're doing here. And so we want to make sure that we enter this check number manually. And of course, once you start entering the number, and it's going to start assuming the sequence. Okay. So that's something you have to also be careful of, especially if you're using bill pay and the numbering sequence is different. So in this case, this check number is 6050. And I forgot to check the date on that. I think it was like 106, but I can go back and edit it in just a minute. But anyway... I'm going to go ahead, yeah, I'll go ahead and put 10-6. And that's something else you have to remind them of is that you want to make sure that they put down the payment date is the date that they wrote the check. And this is important for accrual-based business because the times that the check may clear the bank may not be the same date that the check was written. So you want to make sure they put it on the actual payment date, the date that they wrote the check. And so what we're going to do is we're going to categorize this as estimated tax. And, and then we're just going to go ahead and put the check number here. It will be uh, 6050. And then the amount again was 229422. All right. And... We can actually copy, and I'm not going to worry about that right now. If we actually had a copy of the check, too, we can actually attach it or, or something like that. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and save and close this. And that will take us back to our menu. And assuming everything worked out the way it's, it, it was supposed to, it should match. But what I'm going to do here 
is I'm going to refresh this page. If it doesn't match, then we're going to need to find the match manually. But the, the key is, is that you enter these and then they should match to what's in here. So let's see. And it was 10 6 2023 and, and it might have been because I put the wrong date in there. So let me just double check that and see. No, it, it put the right date in there. All right. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to this check here and we're going to click on find match. And there we go. And we shouldn't have to normally do this. It should automatically match as we go through and do this. But I'm going to go ahead and match this and then I'll show you what happens after you match it. Okay, so once you've matched it, it leaves this area right here, and then it goes over here to categorized, which you're not going to be able to see right away, but we can search by check number, so 6050, and press enter, and then there we go. There's that check. It's matched to this. We click on there, and that's going to go into that area right there. And so basically that's all I have to show you today. So to sum everything up, you want to instruct your clients to enter these manually. That way they can go ahead and match to those items that are sitting in for review as they come in and they want to make sure, oh, let me clear the search results there. So that way all these should match up to the manual entered handwritten checks and everything. So anyway, that's all I have. Y'all have a wonderful day. Y'all take care and we will see you very soon.